Welcome my friends of the interwebs. What is up? <laughs> what is happening guys? All right, so I know I haven't posted in a little bit, but I've been busy. I've been a busy, busy guy. I wanted to answer some questions though. Some of you have left me questions and I kind of want to answer them. Um, one of which is what happened to my reality television show, Oilman? <laughs> Oilman. So it's a little convoluted, but I will do the best that I possibly can in regards to this. I will tell you right now that the uh, the the reality TV business is a tricky and somewhat dirty business. <laughs> it just is. Um, they love you one minute, they hate you the next. It's just, you know, it is what it is. I was blessed enough to have the experience of filming a pilot. Um, there's very few people in this, on this uh, planet, believe it or not, if you think about it, all the reality TV shows out there <laughs> and 350 million people in this country, I am in a very, very, very select group of people who made it that far. Um, there, We ran into some issues and I don't really talk too much about it because it, it will just butt her people and some of those people I really care about. But there was some production issues with actually filming in Southeast Kentucky, um, especially when you started bringing in things like child labor laws and you know how tricky they are in Kentucky. A lot trickier than people thought they were. Um, but it's neither here nor there. The bottom line is that uh, they had a time slot for us. I signed a contract with Viacom, which in case you don't know, Viacom owns MTV Networks. MTV Networks owns Country Music Television, and Country Music Television is the entity that bought our pilot, paid for our pilot to be done, and was going to air our show on their network. I guess right there, right after the Dukes of Hazard. <laughs> you know, um, it was a lot of fun. Uh, the pilot, by the way, the in someday maybe I'll go through and tell you how all this works, but basically. In a nutshell, they contacted me, wanted to know if I was interested. I said, sure. They came and they filled, filmed for like two days and they came up with a sizzler reel. Then they went to pitch the, to, to a pitch fest, pitched a sizzler reel. Uh, Country Music Television really liked it. So then they went ahead and paid for a pilot episode, uh, which they really liked. We went as far as signing contracts and all that good stuff. And, um, and then it was shelved, <laughs> basically for reasons, but it was shelved. Um, but you know, blah, 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 it is what it is. Now, I do want to go into the next phase of this though, and that is, uh, I decide, you know, once you see what goes on behind the scenes, you realize that production companies where you want to be. <laughs> you don't really want to be in front of the camera, that's for the schmucks. Production company is where it's at. And if you've noticed that, you know, since then, I've ran my YouTube experience pretty much like a production company, which means I produce a bunch of YouTube channels. Um, and that's exactly why, you know, it's, it's, uh, I, 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 it's, I just kind of prefer to be behind the scenes now. There's a lot more opportunities with that than there is if you're just in front of the, uh, uh, you know, in front of the screen or in front of in front of the lens. So anyway, um, I got involved after the experience with Storyhouse Productions. I got involved with another production company. I actually signed a producer's contract, and. Um, that contract basically meant, I mean, in a nutshell, there's a gazillion different types of, uh, of producers and everybody calls themselves a producer, but the contract that I had with this company, which I won't name because I'm still under contract with, I can still, we still work together. So, um, it was basically, I would find talent, uh, and then I would, uh, pitch the talent to them and then they would go forward with that talent and see what would happen. And if a show was to get on the air, then I would get $5,000 for every episode aired. Not such a bad gig as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> you know? um, yeah, that's what I'm saying. By the way, uh, not for nothing, The just so you know, the contract that I signed, and I'm sure that I'm no longer bounded by any, any non-disclosures at this point, but the truth is that I was only going to get $1,800 per episode. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Producer is a much better gig <laughs> because there are producers that make a lot more than the five grand even. So I just thought that the five grand was a nice start and then I would go from there. But anyway, um, yeah, $1,800 an episode to work on Oil Man. And now, of course, my agent at the time, Rock Hoomer, uh, he basically said, look, the, the money's really not uh, in what you get paid to do the reality show. The money is actually in um, doing appearances and crap like that. And he represented a couple of guys from the most dangerous catch. And he was giving me some, some, uh, inside baseball information on what exactly I could, I could expect if I had a, a show that was a hit. 
So, you know, and of course with all the reality TV shows out there, you know, who knows, I mean, I don't know. But anyway, like I said, producers where it's at. So, let me, let me tell you, let me walk into the production of it all. So my first um, pitch ever uh, to uh, this company was for Wrangler, Wrangler Barn. And which you know is Cody, okay? Um, and I don't remember how many you know views or how many subscribers he had. He was nowhere near as big as he is today. Um, but I've always been a fan of his, and I said to to the my you know my contact, I said, listen, I said this guy's got something uh, special. He's not a he's not really a talker as much as he is a doer. He knows how to get things done. He does things. Old school style, I mean, literally, I told her, I said, the guy can drop a tree and then mill it into lumber and then build something with it. I said, you know, this, it's endless, this guy's talents. I said, it just, I, I was always fascinated by, by the things that Cody would do. And I said to them, I said, listen, I said, you know, he's got a homestead going on now. He's got a beautiful wife. A he's a lovely family all around. I said, you know, I think this would really be a big deal. Now I always looked at Cody. To be honest with you, I always looked at that that scene that he has go that he has going on as being something that would be be more suited for uh, something more serious, like a PBS or something like that. Um, not as much the the bullshit that goes on in some of these other reality TV shows. And by the way, I'm just gonna go ahead and put this out there because I don't give a rat's ass. ass. Reality and reality TV aren't even distant cousins. Not, they don't have anything to do with one another. They don't even talk, not even on birthdays. So, you know, uh, yeah, take that for what it's worth. But anyway, um, and I don't mind saying this because I know Cody's a big boy and he has, uh, he's, he's, he, listen, he's a man's man. Um, so he, he wanted to hear it straight anyway. But this is what they said to me, which I still, it still blows me away that they said this. They said that his personality wasn't big enough to carry a show. That's literally what they said. Cody's personality was not big enough to, to carry a show. Of which I responded to them, are you freaking crazy? <laughs> you told, did you watch the links that I sent you? Are you freaking crazy? Um, but that's just the way it was. They like a bombastic, a bombastic, a uh, big personality. You know, there's no Cody doesn't have any bombast. He is just a matter of fact kind of dude. Um, and I think that there was a market for that, but they didn't see it that way. And, and it is what it is. So then <laughs> I, I I pitched them Misty Prepper. Um, She's awesome. Now, a lot of you guys know who I'm talking about, and she, much like uh, Cody, um, lived the life. Did you know? Walked the walk, talked to talk the whole nine yards. Um, and I remember sending them a link to a video where uh, Misty's daughter was, I want to say, gutting a hog um, or some critter like that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was a hog. It might have been a deer, but I think it was a hog. Um, yeah, I think it was. And and I'm not sure that she killed the hog, but she definitely gutted it. Anyway, it was pretty fascinating to me because this was a young girl. I'm not sure how old the daughter was, maybe 10, 11, 12-ish, maybe young. And well, I don't think she was a teen, anywhere near a teenage level yet. And she was learning from her, uh, her kinfolk on how to survive and how to butcher an animal and all this stuff. And I thought that was fascinating. And once again, they didn't see it. I don't know why they didn't see it. They just didn't see it. Uh, but then, <laughs> three, the third strike is a charm. I pitched uh, Ironhead 41. That's right, Sammy. I pitched Sammy and they loved him. <laughs> they did, Sammy, they loved him. Uh, Sammy has a very big personality. He, at that time, I, I remember the, I picked about four or five links to his YouTube videos that I, I remember I picked the one where he was cooking up deer testicles and eating them. I think the one where he was canning roadkill rattlesnake. Um, he, he, Sammy's just an interesting guy. If you don't know who he is, Ironhead41. I don't think he makes a ton of videos anymore, but he definitely was f interesting. So they actually went to the next level and they went and they did a sizzler and they filmed him and his family just getting down with the redneck. <laughs> just, they were just, they brought out the, they brought out the, the redneck and, um, you know, they, they came up with an interesting sizzler and unfortunately, for some strange reason, it just wasn't picked up. Because like I said, you know, from my experience, they, they make the sizzler, then they go pitch the sizzler. And from that point, um, you know, it is what it is. Uh, hopefully somebody buys it and uh, rolls with it. 
Unfortunately, now get this, this is the funny thing. Now remember some of the shit that they have on reality TV. The feedback that they got was that Sammy was too redneck. <laughs> I shit you not. Reality TV where you've got some just some funky people out there in and even for reality TV, Sammy was Sammy was too much. <laughs> too much. Now, I don't believe that for a second. I love Sammy to death. He is really a, an amazing human being, and, and I really like him a lot, and I consider him a friend. Um, I think that was yet another fuck-up, but that wasn't the production company's fuck-up. That was the industry's fuck-up. That was the network's fuck-up, because they should have um, ran with that, because I think that he would have been... Every bit is cool and every bit is up there as, um, you know, the, I don't know, the Duck Dynasty guys. Now, that's my opinion. That's one man's opinion. Um, but it is what it is. So, anyway, so hopefully that answers your question as far as the reality TV show and what I've done with reality TV since. I have yet to have a production air, um, whether I'm the producer of it or a star of it. Uh, but I will tell you, and Sammy will even tell you that, it's still a whole lot of fun being involved with that. And, and I know that Sammy and his family enjoyed uh, doing the Sizzler. I know that me and my family enjoyed doing the Sizzle and the Pilot. And um, if you all get a chance to uh, experience that at least once in your life, yeah, roll with it. <laughs> anyway, that's all I got. Um, I'm going to try to answer some more questions. I wanted to uh, answer Lambdog 76s um question about what's going on with YouTube or where I see the, I think it was where I see the direction of YouTube going or where's YouTube going. There's a lot going on with YouTube right now. I think we all know that. Obviously nobody's making any money or any real money. Um, but you know, that's going to be a wholly long video. So I'll get to that. Sorry about that lamb dog, but I will see you all later.